This expansion adds daring deeds, evil plots, and masked identities to your game of good society. Expect to be caught up in schemes, machinations, and outrageous action sequences, all while trying to maintain a respectable reputation and secure an advantageous marriage. In this video, we're going to be explaining the main rule changes between Sense Sensibility and Swordsmanship and Good Society. And we're also going to be playing our own little two-player game so you can get the idea of how it works. Sense Sensibility and Swordsmanship is an expansion for Good Society, so you'll need to know all the rules of the base game in order to play. If you'd like to learn how to play Good Society, you can check out our video series, which we'll link in the description below. As well as this, not every rule of Sense, Sensibility and Swordsmanship will be included in this video, so if you're planning to run the game, we recommend you give it a read. But we'll go through most of the rules you need to know. Before we jump in, a quick note on preparing your game. This expansion is best with three to five major characters. To get the full experience, we recommend games of three to five cycles in length. If this is your first time playing Sense, Sensibility and Swordsmanship, we also recommend you play with the Evil Plot module, which we'll be using today. All right, let's jump into our game. For this example game, we've already chosen our collaboration settings off screen. We are playing with a romantic comedy tone. Our history is a little important, and we will be playing with gender roles off. Uh, we'll also be playing without hidden information. So since we've already worked that out, we're gonna move straight on to backstory. So we are going to start backstory by preparing our evil plot, and for this we will need our evil plot sheet. The first thing we need to do is pick our big bad and then decide on our evil plot. And the facilitator can do this ahead of time as well to save time in the game. Then after we finish backstory, we're going to come back and choose the big bad's second in command. So we're going to start by choosing our big bad from the deck of connections. And this can be someone from the base deck or from the swordsmanship expansion. And we've gone ahead and chosen Hilda as our big bad today. Mm -hmm. So she is rich, influential, widowed, proud, determined, and protective, dedicated to the success of the family name, and gives plentiful advice in the form of constructive insults. The next thing we need to do is decide on her position. So most big bads have some sort of position of influence or power, and this is what allows them to exert their evil <laughs> upon the world. Uh, so for Hilda, it's clear that she is a woman of quite a lot of influence in mm -hmm. the local mm -hmm. area. What if she holds a honorary position in Parliament? Oh yeah. Because of her good works over her lifetime. Yes. And, and it's not title. meant to be anything that is actually influential in mm -hmm. Parliament. They don't, it doesn't have any formal power, mm. but in reality, she's actually able to pull quite a lot of the strings. Yes, yes. Politically, it's an important exactly. title. Exactly. Yeah, that's cool. I like that. It's interesting if she is a honorary advisor to Parliament why she would decide to turn a coat, as it were. <laughs> Here's my pitch. She's an honorary advisor in Parliament, and the reason for this is that she's gotten squeezed out of her actual role, which is meant to hold power and influence, mm -hmm. and she is sort of resentful about this happening. Mm, I see. That's good. So the next thing we need to do is decide on her reputation. And this doesn't have to be true, but it is what society thinks about her. Mm -hmm. Sounds like she lost some sort of coup in the parliament. Yeah, parliamentary it does sound like that. Yeah. And so like they couldn't outright kick her mm. out and that's why she's got this honorary mm -hmm. position, but it's kind of like a slap in the face. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, so maybe... I kind of like divisive? exiled because... Oh, divisive is great. Yeah, let's go with divisive. I like that because she is clearly living in the country, right? She's yeah, not yeah, residing not in the middle of, in the, the, middle midst of, of the midst of it. Midst of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so she's, she's literally physically removed from the seat of power. Yeah, physically um, removed. Uh, and people who want to consult with her have to like get in their carriage and, and drive like, ride off to the middle of nowhere. Yeah. So she is divisive, exiled and unyielding. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty good picture of her, yeah, I think. I think so. So now we know a bit about our big bad. We need to decide on our evil plot. And here you can create your own plot or you can use one of the examples from the book. We're going ahead and using one of the plots from the book, which is called A Royal Welcome. So V, if you'd yeah. like to read that for us. So our evil plot for this game is the big bad wants to steal the golden seal so they can fake an announcement to a royal ball to then lure the prince to the estate in order to kidnap the prince and sell him to France. Ooh. It's worse than we thought because the French don't require the prince alive. <gasps> so now we have those details established about our big bad and our evil plot. We're going to put that aside for the moment mm -hmm. and we're going to jump over to our major characters. So in Sense, Sensibility and Swordsmanship, 
Most major characters will have both a character role, like the heir or the socialite, and a masked identity, like the vigilante or the bounty hunter. A masked identity is an identity that character takes on to perform their extra-legal activities, such as freeing political prisoners or stealing the crown jewels. Now, not every major character in Sense, Sensibility and Swordsmanship is going to have a masked identity, but most of them will. So I've gone ahead and prepared our playset today in full mm -hmm. um, by putting together combinations of desires, relationships, mass identity, and character role. Now you'll notice our characters today do not have family background sheets. That is because your masked identity sheet replaces your family background sheet. The other thing to note is that each of our characters have two desires. Uh, one of these desires will relate to our character role and the other one will relate to our masked identity. So we've gone ahead and chosen our characters based on their desires. Uh, so Vini, do you want to let us know your civilian and masked desire? So my masked desire, this one, is make sure the plan proceeds exactly as scheduled. And I am reporting to Hilda. Mm. So <laughs> clearly I'm going to steal this golden seal, take an announcement to the royal boy. So it's 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 <laughs> and then my civilian desire is determine your love's true feelings and re-establish your engagement. Very good. So my masked identity is to discover the true identity of the masked criminal outlaw and arrest them in their civilian life. And my civilian desire is to save my family from financial ruin so I can break mm -hmm. off my engagement. Love to be in a bit of financial ruin. Mm. You'll notice although we have two desires, we only have one relationship. Yeah. And if this relationship is from the Swordsmanship expansion, it's going to link two characters' masked identities. Whereas if it is from the base game, it's going to link two characters' civilian identities, unless the card or the playset says otherwise. And you can tell whether a card is from Sense, Sensibility, and Swordsmanship by looking for the little sword icon at the bottom of the card. So since there are two of us, uh, our relationship connections will be pretty obvious. So yep. let's go ahead and read those out. So my relationship card is from the base deck, so it will be connecting the civilian identities. The public side is friends, um, we are long-standing acquaintances, but in private we are old flames. And my relationship card is from the Swordsmanship expansion, so it will be connecting our masked identity, and unsurprisingly, <laughs> given my desire, we are arch enemies, oh, no. and desire each other's complete and utter ruin. We get to enjoy uh, having smoochy tension in our civilian lives and stabby tension in our <laughs> <laughs> masks. Unbeknownst to both of us. Yes. Excellent. So now we have our relationships and our desires. We're going to go ahead and flesh out our characters. Okay, great. And we're going to fill out our character role sheets in the same way we normally would. There are no changes there. Mm -hmm. um, but we won't be choosing initial reputation tags because, of course, we don't have family background sheets. Yep. And because we have both a masked identity and a character role, uh, we'll be getting reputation tags a bit faster than usual anyway during mm -hmm. the game. But let me talk through how we go ahead and create our masked identities. So of course we have our masked identity's name, mm -hmm. their appearance. The reason why they became the mask be that to steal the biggest jewel or to avenge their parents' death or fight for justice or whatever it is. And then the last thing you have on your sheet is the key to revealing your civilian identity. Now, this is a tell that your character has that connects their masked identity with their civilian identity. Mm. And people may be able to find this during the game mm. in order to track down who, who you are, are in your right. day to day life. Yep. Ordinarily, that's a theme such as some coded letters or an engraving on a sword, but it can also be a place mm -hmm. like a secret lair or even a person as well. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead now and start we'll that creation process. Okay. Yes. So I think I'd like my character to be the grandchild of the big bad. Okay. Because your character is working for the big bad. My character does not know that Hilda is in fact evil. <laughs> your character knows this, mm. but doesn't know who I am. Yes. At night. So my character role is the dependent, and my mask identity is the bounty hunter. Mm -hmm. Which is why I think maybe my parents have passed away, and my character is dependent on Hilda, who was maybe a more distant relative. Mm -hmm. Maybe someone they didn't see a lot of during mm -hmm. their childhood, and they don't exactly necessarily get along, but yeah. hey, this is the situation as it stands. Yeah. Feel ready? 
to introduce I our am. characters. And let's start with you. Okay, so I I will be playing Francis Wilk. Uh, he is twenty six. He has a roguish smile and a rather like easy air about him. Mm -hmm. Almost, yeah. It sometimes feels like a childishness because it feels like there's not a lot that weighs him down. Right. Um, he's confident and reckless, uh, which is segues really well into his uh, outlaw alter ego as the crow. Mm -hmm. um, searcher of shiny things. <laughs> um, as the crow, Francis uh, wears a cloak studded with like crow feathers. Mm -hmm. He becomes the mask in order to just display his prowess because he's good at it mm -hmm. and uh, be audacious. And the key to revealing his civilian identity is a secret room in my manor, with, which is opened by um, like a heavy burnished key of some sort. Right. Mm. Who do you live with? Are you the master of your own house? or I think so, yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, mm. so that's Frances Wilk. Uh, so I'll go ahead and introduce my character. Um, so her name is Jacinda Proud. She is 23 years of age. I kind of have this idea that although her and her grandmother are distant and don't really get along, they're actually very similar in a lot of ways. <laughs> Jacinda is a very neat, collected, to the point kind of person. You could describe her as proud, uh, as her last name suggests, in fact, and solemn. She's polite because she has to be, but she yearns for the freedom that her grandmother has earned to not be polite. By night, she is called Eclipse. Uh, and the idea of that being that the... It's terrible. It's, it's but you know how mass identities are. Yes. That the shining light of justice and the dark shadow of the night combine to make <laughs> the bounty hunter. The other reason why she chose Eclipse is because of the internal struggle but in within herself to do what's right. Um, but also the temptation to give in to those shadowy, you know, dark ways of achieving what she aims for. I think she became Eclipse in order to preserve order, but I think it's a Batman situation where her parents, her parents were killed in some sort of mugging or highway oh, no. hold up. And I think post that point, she's become a lot more aggressive. She's going after bigger targets and that sort of like shadow has begun to creep into what she's been doing. Mm. Um, and as mentioned, the key to revealing her civilian identity is of course her birthmark, which Francis would have definitely seen during the Do time. Oh my goodness, courting. how how scandalous. Impropriate. Yeah. Alright, so now we've finished creating our major characters, we're gonna go ahead and create some connections for them. Mm -hmm. And in this game, each player will create two connections, one that relates to their civilian identity and one that relates to their masked identity. And we create these in the same way as we do in Good Society, so nothing new here. So I have here some connections from our deck of connections as well to help us create these characters. Hill doesn't actually need to steal the seal. She could also use the seal. Use, break in and use the seal or have someone, <clears throat> maybe a master thief, <laughs> break in and use the seal on a document that she has prepared for the announcing the ball. Yeah. Because yeah. that oh. way no one knows the seal is missing. Yeah. So let's go ahead and introduce our connections. Okay. Why don't you kick us off? So uh, I have Kenneth, who is my underworld contact. He is a police detective. So I think that we sometimes have a give and take relationship. Is Kenneth actually corrupt or is there something particular about your relationship? Mm. Maybe either it could either be that he has a soft spot for you or that he's, <laughs> u he's using you because he thinks one day you'll be useful at getting the bigger fish or something like that. I think that Kenneth is aware of at least my associations with, not Hilda in particular, but like with some sort of unfolding plot that is bigger than mm -hmm. this. He knows that if he waits long enough with this like, in this fishing expedition that he'll get Something away bigger. with something bigger yeah. so i think it tolerates me for that reason yeah. um which has led to some familiarity and good you know like a mm -hmm. relationship yeah. thing but i think that's like playing with fire at mm -hmm. some point yeah, yeah i like that 
And your second connection. Yes, and I've also got Edwin, who is my um, commanding officer back when I was in the military. And is probably someone who knows me really well. My two connections, are, of course, I have my lovely fiancé, Florentia, who I am desperately trying not to marry. <laughs> um, she is rigid and precise. She's also an army colonel, and I think... Pull of convenience is also uh, they work works with working Edwin. with Edwin um, mm -hmm. in regards to the transportation and security of mm -hmm. the seal and probably like a bunch of other things that are being transported yeah. at the same time. Yeah, shiny royal things. <laughs> um, yeah, so she is proper severe and decisive. Jacinda actually has a lot of respect for her, mm -hmm. but this wasn't Jacinda's idea. Mm -hmm. She knows that being Eclipse, her relationship with the law is a little bit flexible. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't sit well with Florentia being an mm -hmm. army colonel and being an extreme stickler for the rules, I mm -hmm. think. So she just has this feeling that it's going to end badly. <laughs> <laughs> and she would be right. And she would be right, no. because drama. Um, but yes, okay. And so her, her contact as Eclipse yeah. is actually... Um, Patricia, um, she is a famous barrister. She is a prosecutor for the Crown. She puts criminals away. It's what she does. So now we've gone ahead and created our connections. Yep. We need to choose one of these to be the second in command oh, for our big bad. I think it'd be hilarious if it was Edwin. I was thinking it was. <laughs> I actually was, yeah. Yeah, I'm just feeling it, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's a really good way to wrap him really tightly yeah, in the story so as well. So I'll pop his name in here. Now we've decided he's the second in command. We need to choose what role he plays for Hilda. Mm -hmm. Proud. Government official. Government probably. official. Cool, that sounds good. Does Francis know that Edwin is Hilda's second in command? Mm, I think that I know... The same, like they, they're politically affiliated mm -hmm. in some way. I might not know that Edwin is the second in command. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like, I feel really good about mm -hmm. our characters and connections. Yep. Are you feeling that? Yep. Yes. So that actually brings us to the end of the backstory, backstory phase. Yeah. And we are going to jump into our cycle of play. Sense, sensibility and swordsmanship starts off with a new phase at the beginning of the cycle of play. And this is the rooftop phase. And the rooftop phase is an opportunity to see our characters' exploits as their masked identities. Uh, so, of course, your character can appear in the civilian guise if they need to, but really the focus is on what they do at night. <laughs> and the rooftop phase works very similar to a series of visitations in that we each take turns to frame a scene we would like to see. I have an idea for one. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be trying to stamp the invitation. Okay. Right. Yes. But it's not just one invitation, it's several invitations. Right? <laughs> yes. It's a, but it's also a very storming and raining day, so I have to, oh, have to like stuff all of this important paper yes, in, like, in like a waterproof bag and like I'm trying to keep it dry. So what kind of security are we talking about yeah, here I for wonder... the transportation of the Golden Seal? May I, I was thinking maybe they're on the move. Maybe they are still trying to make good time, so they are traveling, but because it's night and they have to go by the lanterns, and it's like kind of a slower pace. Okay. They're, they're like, but they've chosen to drive through the night. Right, I see. So your, your plan is, since it is black out, is to be completely unseen. And since you're not taking anything, maybe you can get in and out without anyone ever knowing you were there. Yeah, exactly. I like it. I like it. We decided that both Florentia and Edwin are involved in the transportation of this seal. Edwin's mm. probably up there riding up near the front of yes. the thing with, you know, he's like lighting up the path or something like that. I, I think Florentia, it would be more interesting if Florentia is probably like somewhere near, closer to the seal. Right. Yeah. I like that. The seal is probably in like a carriage, right? A yeah. Transportation carriage. Yeah. So Hilda has talked to Edwin, but yeah. you don't know that. So you said it's pouring with rain. Yes. As um, the crow makes their approach. Yeah. Do you want to give us a visual? What's the plan? What are you What are you going to do? What does this look like? If you imagine this road and like a couple of the carriages, there's some like dotted with lights mm -hmm. that uh, some of the guards are carrying. But there are definitely shadowy bits as well mm -hmm. in the light because it's raining, um, the light and windy. Some of the lights are flickering in and out, and sometimes they do go off. You know, like yes. that's just the wind. Um, yes. So I think we see um, the crow um, hood up. Uh, water kind of 
flecking off a stride like a, a dark black horse as well matching yeah. glimmering midnight yeah. color the crow takes the cloak flicks out some of the water and underneath you can see this like saddle bag full of invitations <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. I love that. So not only do you need to get in, you need like a good time. Ten like, minutes yeah, 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 yeah. for the invitation. <laughs> That's wonderful. I yep. love it. As always in this game, we'll be playing each other's connections. Yes. Uh, so you're going to be playing Florentia, who's there. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be playing Edwin, mm -hmm. who's on the scene. This is a daring deed. Mm -hmm. This is this is a seriously daring deed. <gasps> yeah. We so ready? we are going to go ahead and use our daring deeds rules. Mm -hmm. And as part of that, the first thing that we need to decide on is whether we resolve this simply using a resolve token or whether uh, we resolve this with the daring deed resolution mm -hmm. process. I have a question for you. Yes. Is the eclipse on the scene? Well, I have a resolve token. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm not afraid to spend it. Yes. This resolve token is for Eclipse to definitely be on the scene. Awesome. I will take it. How did you know to be on the scene this particular night? I think that Eclipse didn't know about this all happening. She followed you. the crow. <laughs> yeah. She knows where your horse is stabled, so she knows when you go out as the crow. Yeah. On this particular night, she checked in, she saw it there. And she managed to catch the crow leaving the stables. And she just straight up followed him. Oh, excellent. So our first question to determine whether we are going to resolve this with the resolution process or with a resolve token is, does the conflict involve two or more major characters who want to get their way? And I feel the answer here is definitely yes. yes because we have got the crow on the scene, we've got Eclipse on the scene, and both of them are after something. Mm -hmm. So that means we are going to go into our Daring Deeds resolution process. The first step in the Daring Deeds resolution process is to determine who is going to be involved in yep. resolving the Daring Deed. And any person who wishes to be part of this resolution and has a character involved can jump in. So in this case, of course, the Eclipse is involved, the Crow is involved, but Edwin and Florentia are also involved. So even if we were not playing our major characters, these major characters on the scene, as connections, you can also get involved in the Daring Deeds process. The next thing that is going to happen is that we are both going to state our ideal outcome from this situation. And this is our ideal outcome as players, yep. not our characters. So this could be good for our characters, this could be <laughs> bad for our characters. And when we do this, we can take into consideration both what uh, we want for Eclipse and the Crow, mm -hmm. but also Florentia and Edwin. Yeah. My ideal outcome, I am happy for the Crow to get into the carriage and seal these invitations, um, but I would like for Eclipse to apprehend the crow after they've dropped the invitations off at the rendezvous point. I think the rendezvous point is Edwin. <laughs> Edwin is the rendezvous point. That's wonderful. So then for Edwin, I would like Edwin to pick up these invitations without anyone noticing yeah. that he has done yeah. anything out of the usual. Yeah. For the crow, obviously, I would love to be able to to actually get into the carriage and yes. then have all the all 50 invitations and then drop them off. <laughs> I think it would be great if one of the invitations like dropped out, dropped out, of, out the of the sack, satchel and like Florentia was the one who found it. I really like that. So now we have both stated our ideal outcome for the situation. Players with conflicting outcomes have option to make a concession. So to change their outcome so they mesh together or we can also say if there's something about the other person's outcome that doesn't work for us mm. um, and ask them to revise it as well. Yeah. So our outcomes don't seem to conflict on the surface. I guess the only, yeah. The, the only, only thing that uh, maybe is the conflict is with Florentia getting the invitation and Edwin trying to stay in combination. Yeah, yeah that's true. And also um, when you say apprehend, would it be okay if I'm apprehended but maybe not revealed? Not revealed. Yeah. Would that be okay with you? Yes. Okay. So revising my ideal outcome, I think I'd like Eclipse to apprehend the crow, but not to find out that Francis is find there. out that it is in fact Francis. Great. And for Edwin, I'm okay with Florentia seeing the invitation. I don't think I want Florentia to know that it's Edwin. Yeah. Okay. So and your ideal outcome 
sort of stays. Yeah, 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 I think there is. Since we are very happy with each other's revised outcomes, mm -hmm. we do not need to go to resolve token bidding. Mm -hmm. But if our ideal outcomes had remained in conflict, so say there was just something at, like uh, you, I didn't want that you were adamant it. that you didn't want the code yeah. to be apprehended and I was adamant that the one thing I wanted was for yeah. the code to be apprehended, we could go to resolve token bidding. And uh, you'll find the full rules for that in the book. But uh, loosely, the way that works is that we bid resolve tokens and the person who wins the bid uh, will get to determine which outcomes come to pass and which outcomes don't come to pass. Now we've worked out what's happening in this very elaborate yeah. so, uh, evening. Evening, uh, We are going to jump in and play out the Daring Deed. Yep. The way this works is that the facilitator, um, if there was one, would ask each player a question in turn to help advance the action towards the ideal outcomes and find out how the steed plays out. Um, since today we don't really have a facilitator, we're sort of playing together cooperatively, mm -hmm. then we're going to take turns asking each other questions mm -hmm. and remembering that we can ask questions about Edwin and Florentia's mm -hmm. involvement as well. Okay, cool. So my question is, how does the crow slip into the place with the golden seal unseen? Mm. And the crow's like, yeah, and then the, the horse speeds off towards um, the carriage holding the golden scene in it. Um, and he rides alongside it um, in the shadowy side of it and like see him jump, daring do, jumping off the back of the horse um, onto the moving carriage at the top. Door to the carriage swings open um, and he slips in, pulling it shut behind him as the whole thing is still moving. Um, and we see the horse peel off into the night. It's a very well-trained horse. <laughs> um, and like the crow whirls around into this like quiet rocking carriage. We see the crow start to uh, rummage around some of the boxes to, to find the seal. It's, it's a heavy driving rain, right? So I think like there's, there's some drips on the ground and stuff like that. And like the satchel gets pulled out and these envelopes kind of are almost spilling out. We hear, ah, there it is. Can't believe I'm doing parchment work at this time of night. And then we, we sort of like see a match come up and like a small like tea light candle <laughs> be lit on some um, crates, like on top of a crate. And then we see the like stamping of um, invitations mm -hmm. um, on top of that crate mm -hmm. in the like flickering light. You're following me, right? Mm -hmm. How do you enter the scene? Uh, so Eclipse is um, also on horseback because you have to be on a horse to chase a horse. <laughs> when they see the crow jump into the carriage, they're riding on their horse parallel to the carriage. They don't want to be seen by the army, right? Mm -hmm. They need to keep out of view. Mm. And so their plan is to wait for the moment that the crow re-emerges from the carriage. Mm. That's the time they're going to strike. I think that Jacinda actually spots Florencia by the carriage. Mm. Uh, I think yep. she is like the one person who has kept her light aloft amidst the <laughs> <laughs> pouring rain while everyone else around her is like struggling to like light the lamp yeah. lit. Well, actually, I think Your that leads straight yeah. into my question, that which is that say. Florentia, I think, actually pulls out on her horse to investigate the mm -hmm. disruption that she thought she noticed mm -hmm. to the carriage. How does the crow evade notice? And we have that tense like close up as she's like opening the side of the carriage door. Yeah. Right? And yeah. Cuts to like Francis, uh, sorry, the crow still like nonchalantly stamping, <laughs> stamping these invitations, being like, oh, such hard work. <laughs> I think I, I must, I think I preferred the jewels. And then, um, you know, like the, the close up again, it's like it's opening and then the creak as the carriage door opens. Um, but we see like a few drop. all we see is like a few drops of wax on yeah. the table and like a few drops of rain on like water yeah. on the floor. Um, and then, but like apart from that, nobody and it's like silent. Um, and Florence is just like slightly confused face. Um, but then she like, see something that's fallen on the side, this white paper, like this mm. parchment paper, and we just see her reaching down for it. Meanwhile, yeah. on the other side of yeah, the carriage, yeah, I was gonna say. the crow is just like hanging, you know, like hanging off the side of the, uh, the, the 
carried like this and like just peeks in as she's bending over and picking up something off the ground just mm. watches her and then is and pulls himself up on mm. top of the carriage when he's on top of uh the carriage rumbling on there's like a whistle and uh the horse comes out breaks out again from the night um and uh he jumps on it and rides off mm -hmm. um I think he rides forward. This part is really fast. He rides forward to a second car, like a car. He counts yeah. the carriages, right? To and, drop off the. And then, like, yeah, we just see like through like it, the the carriage window is being lowered, and yeah. he like, throws it in through the window and then peels off into the night. Amazing. My question for you is, Edwin is. Um, what do we see of Edwin next? It's very broad, but I wanted to give you space to introduce Edwin. I think we see Edwin, who was riding at the head of the um, procession turn to like his junior next to him mm -hmm. and be like um yeah take point yeah and then without any explanation kind of like peel back <laughs> this young <laughs> bright eye thing is like oh i'm in charge yeah like i think he's relying on his like authority mm -hmm. that no one is going to question him and uh procession has been set up is such that all the people around the less important carriage with the satchels thrown into are all junior officers mm -hmm. uh they're like lieutenants they're yeah. way 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 below the yeah. colonel in rank you see as they like pull parallel with the carriage that they look through the window yeah. see the satchel there and that's all they need to do for the moment just mm -hmm. confirm that it's there mm -hmm. because their plan for delivering it to hilda is going to be later in the evening awesome why doesn't the crow slip away unseen i feel like you should definitely answer this one i, I will just set up my side scene and then I'll, I'll throw the question back onto you i think I peel away into the woods nearby and it's kind of a fun almost like a joyride because the woods like the trees aren't so close together that you can't ride but it requires a lot of skill to also like um get through and so mm -hmm. I think I'm having a lot of fun um on this high of my successful uh caper tonight mm -hmm. that I'm also like uh blowing off some steam leading my horse down um, this, like, downward wooded path. Mm -hmm. uh, Crow starts galloping off. Eclipse is hot on their tail. Mm. Uh, when they turn into the forest, I think Eclipse is like, this is good for me because <gasps> I think she fancies herself a better rider. Uh, yeah, that's what I, heard. I was hoping Than the crow, and she's sort of like, she's at a disadvantage when there's a lot of jumping through you know, around rooftops and into windows <laughs> and sneaking, but where there's just straight out trying to outrun someone and horsemanship. <laughs> this is her this is her jam. I think the crow can hear Eclipse mm, coming from her. Her. And and then I think I think she actually calls out. She's like, Surrender yourself, crow. <laughs> Simple question, how does the crow react to this when he sees there's someone on his tail? I'm a bit shocked for a moment, but then I, I get that emotion under control. A big grin cracks across my face and I say, Oh, to be oh, to be pursued in the dead of night, driving rain in the middle of the forest. Fortunately for me, the terrain here is to my advantage. And I like pull my horse behind a big tree and emerge from another side. I think Eclipse yells back. It depends who's doing the riding. I think he lost sight of Eclipse momentarily. Mm -hmm. And, and I they, thought that's because I slipped you. Yeah, but when they reappear, they, it's actually because they jumped behind you onto your horse. <laughs> <laughs> they did a, yep. yeah, they've done a horse, you know, the equivalent of when a pirate ship pulls up and yep. you jump across yeah. your board. They've done that with horses. I don't know if it's physically possible, but I don't because care. It is. So yeah, your turn to ask a question then. Okay, so at this point, how do you apprehend mm -hmm. She's taken her her uh, sword out in preparation for this maneuver already, uh -huh. um, but is holding it the other way around. Oh, right, and the she's, hilt up. Yeah, mm -hmm. and she's going to knock you on the head <laughs> of the hilt while reaching out with her other hand to pull the reins, pull the reins to, to, to steal the horse. <laughs> because we're badass and we can yeah, do yeah, this yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, you are. You just hear like, oof, <laughs> and then like, I just dropped like, <laughs> like, you know, I'm just knocked out. Totally cold, cold knocked out. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I think I think it's funny because she knocks you with the sword, grabs the rein, and then has to like slip her other hand around mm -hmm. to prevent um, me falling off the horse. Falling off the horse and really seriously injuring themselves. You just ride the horse with me, like it passed out in oh, your. Good. It's like a very slow procession of like her trying to guide two horses and an unconscious 
<laughs> An unconscious crow. An unconscious crow. The question is, though, why doesn't she take off his mask? She doesn't want to know. Yeah, that's what I thought. Too. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I was going to add in the thing, like, maybe when, when I was slumped on your thing and you smell it, you're like, wait, I know the smell. Maybe, maybe I don't yeah, want to know. Yeah, I like that. When he slumped onto her, yeah, she yeah, smelled like that. that he smelled familiar, but couldn't place who it was. Mm-hmm. And it didn't take off the mask because she didn't want to know. Yeah, that's a, I think that makes a she lot of sense. She wanted justice to be done and she didn't want the chance to appear in her heart yeah. to pervert its course. Yeah, yeah. That's so that's your character. It. Oh that's my god. It. We've got it. We, oh, we solved it. We, we, we know why. So that's the end of your scene for the rooftop phase. Mm-hmm. And I think what I would like to see is Eclipse delivering the crow to the police. I would like Kenneth to be here and to be on my side, but you don't know it. Okay, so in this scene, I will be playing Kenneth and Eclipse. Mm-hmm. The constabulary headquarters are near the middle of town. It takes a while for like Eclipse to navigate there unseen. I think dawn is just beginning to break in the sky. Francis has definitely come to by this time for sure, uh-huh. but he is securely tied up. I'm pretending to still be asleep. (laughs) I think Eclipse is a frequent visitor of the constabulary. And uh, (laughs) there is like a little section where they, you know, they have a little stable area where they keep their horses. She sort of waves at them. They let, they let Mm -hmm. her in there. Mm -hmm. I think I'm come to, right? And I'm trying to sneak glances over at you as you're doing things. Um, Wondering like, like I'm aware of who you are, but I don't really like. We haven't. We've always been in like these action yeah, scenes, sequences. sequences. Yeah. We've only ever appeared in action sequences yeah. together, and like this is like the first quiet moment that mm-hmm. I've seen. And you're not really like you're just going about your business, yes. right? So I'm you know sneaking these glances over. Yeah, Eclipse is like trying to maneuver you off the off the horse, off the horse. and trying to wake you up. I think they're like yeah. shaking you. I'm like lolling and pretending to fall on you and, and making things harder. Um, oh, actually, I've got a pretty good idea. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. Already my last resort. <laughs> can I... Where, it's like, can I see your birthmark? Is it somewhere that I'm like able to see it as well, like your man handling me around? Maybe as you're pretending to collapse on me, you grub against my dress and it sort of pushes the collar out of the way. And you can see it. It's just like right below the collar. Mm-hmm. That sounds good. I'll take that. Yeah. So then you know. Yeah, I suppose I would know. Well, I mean, how distinctive <laughs> is this? Does Francis know straight away? And or Francis, do you have the other yeah. information of like my height, you know, yeah, my no, manner I think I know. It's, okay. it's, I think if that's okay with you. Yeah, it's, so um, in Sense Sensibility and Swordsmanship, when you want to know about another character's dual identity, you can do that um, as part of a uh, bargaining and a daring deed, or you can offer them a result token for it, as would happen here. Mm-hmm. And they obviously have a choice of whether to accept yeah, or not. No. Um, mm-hmm. It can't be done without that uh, ability to negotiate. Yeah. Um, and just because you know Jacinda's dual identity now, doesn't mean that Eclipse's identity is revealed. For a character's identity to be revealed, um, that has to mean it's publicly revealed. And of course, when your secret identity is publicly revealed, things can't go on as they were. So that's when the revealed conditions on your sheet come into play. Mm-hmm. I can read more about that in the book. For this moment, I accept this resolve token and Francis puts two and two together. And then I got one token right back at you for this, but this is in fact <laughs> a monologue token. Oh God. Oh my God. I need to, I need a moment to collect my thoughts. Mm-hmm. Oh, I should have known. I guess this makes things easy. How difficult? I suppose it depends if Jacinda truly still loves me. If so, then yeah, everything will be just fine. And if not, then everything will be just the opposite. But I suppose I've always lived my life in such stark dichotomies. So there's nothing new in this. There's only the next moment and the next. And I think as, as it like, I'm thinking that I've like got my my head on your shoulder. <laughs> That's when Kenneth walks out mm-hmm. to see who Eclipse has brought in. Like Eclipse is saying, "Get up! I know you're awake." Oh, what? It's morning already. On your feet. I like get up very slowly and say, "Oh, 
I must have had too much of something last night. I have finally caught this crow. Mid theft, no less. I have no doubt you'll find whatever it is they stole upon their person. <laughs> I'm just patting my own self down, like, turn out my pockets, very old, like... Um, and Kenneth is sort of like, thank you, Eclipse, we'll take it from here. And then I think he pulls out like a little form <laughs> and he signs the form and puts the details in it and hands it to Eclipse. Hand this in, as always, to claim your bounty. Like, she takes the form and she sort of like hesitates for a moment as she <laughs> remembers the familiar smell mm -hmm. and like looks down at the crow and then she shakes her head and disappears. Mm -hmm. I think I pull up my like hands and I'm like to Kenneth, these seem a little tight, don't you think? <laughs> I think Kenneth says, hmm, and like pushes up the crow's mask. Does Kenneth know who you are in your daily life, in your, in your everyday life? I don't think so, not okay. at this point. I'll offer you a result token for that. Yeah, I think that's fine. Mm -hmm. I think Kenneth hasn't had quite this opportunity before. And especially since the crow mm, is still mm -hmm, in cuffs. Mm -hmm, so I think he pushes up the crow's mask and then he sees that it is, in fact, Mr. Francis Welk and he pushes down the crow's mask. Uh, I think I say something like, it's, was that to your satisfaction, sir? Very satisfying. <laughs> and he pulls out some keys and unlocks the cuffs mm -hmm. and says, you understand, don't you, Mr. Welk? In my business, information is a very important. It is. Now, shall I say that I slipped out of these manacles all on my own? Oh, perhaps some sort of elaborate story involving you, the horse, and the, the bucket. And he points to a bucket <laughs> that's like on a shelf that could yeah. be like kicked over and fall on someone's head. Mm -hmm. That would be per the usual for you, wouldn't it? I'm glad you think so. I would advise against being brought in here under such circumstances again. After all, there's only so much I can do. I know. I know how it works. And I can give you a name in the army. Good. Let's not talk now. And then I like um, elbow the shelf with the bucket so that the bucket <laughs> falls on the ground with a like really heavy thud. Okay. So that's the end of our rooftop phase, and we move from there into our novel chapter phase. And the novel chapter phase works the same way as in Good Society. It is primarily the opportunity to explore your character's civilian identity mm -hmm. and see what happens in their day-to-day -day life and, you know, the struggles that they have there. Cool. Um, but of course, nefarious things can <laughs> still and probably will, will. happen yeah. um, but that is that is the focus of novel chapters mm. for our novel chapter today an interesting option could be hilda proud's birthday <laughs> i love birthdays yeah um maybe her 62nd birthday what do you think okay that sounds good yes and I feel like we'll need to share the character mm -hmm, of probably. Hilda here maybe let's jump in when this party is already in, in full swing what mm -hmm. kind of affair would Hilda have for her 62nd birthday? What is this like? It's quite lively. There's a lot of, um, it's a, quite a mixture of people, um, a lot of movers and shakers, and, but also a lot of like, like from different spheres, but they're all movers and shakers. Mm -hmm. Like the aura is like, there's like, there's this forced casualness, friendliness, <laughs> but it's like this facade of yeah. like desperate struggling <laughs> for position and power right under the surface. That's like, Oh. Eminently there. Jacinda is giving Hilda her gift and saying happy birthday during the party, as opposed to, I mean, they live in the same yes, state. Yes. You know, she could have done this at any time, but yes. she's doing this during the party to <laughs> keep the conversation be as short as she can humanly get away with it. <laughs> I think Jacinda woke up this morning and there was a dress there. And so that is what she's wearing. <laughs> And it is not to her liking, it is probably pastel, mm -hmm. bit too much lace, but this is what she's got. Mm. They're just making a point by wearing the like full color version of the color that you're wearing. Oh good, the <laughs> deep rich version yes. of it. Yes, and so they are sort of matching in the way that drapery might be if you <laughs> were to arrange it tactically. 
play in a yes. room. But people would describe me as regal and you as washed out. <laughs> I think Jacinda even waits for her turn to approach Hilda. Mm -hmm. And eventually that time comes mm -hmm. around. Mm -hmm. And Hilda acknowledges her. Mm -hmm. Happy birthday, grandmother. She has a small wrapped gift. She says, this gift is from myself and Florentia. I'm oh. sorry she couldn't be here. How wonderful. This is a, it's a very generous and dutiful of you. And I like pull at this, the bow to like unwrap it mm -hmm. gracefully on the spot. Yeah. What did you get? Okay. This gift is in truth from Florentia. Mm -hmm. Actually, you're playing Florentia. What did she... Mm, a bottle of ink. A bottle of ink. Yes, very good. Of a very rare pigment. So that's what it is. It's a bottle of ink. And I think it'd be immediately clear to Hilda that Jacinda did not choose nor purchase this. <laughs> Deep dusk flower. Oh, it's a beautiful gift. I scarce thought that you would have the time. But I imagine with someone by your side, things get a bit easier. Enjoy your party, grandmother. Can I grab your hand and uh, say one other thing? Mm -hmm. I know you don't think that I care, but thank you truly. I think Jacinda just like nods and says, thank you, grandmother. When she turns away, she looks a little bit thrown off. <laughs> like, what was that about? Mm. And I think she's gonna look even more thrown off still because as she is making her way back through the party. I think she almost physically runs into Francis. <laughs> What's Francis look like at this party? What is he up to? Francis is in a beautifully tailored suit. At the moment uh, is a deep in some sort of conversation that has got a lot of joking and laughter mm -hmm. um, with someone not important who, mm -hmm. <laughs> someone probably that he just ran into two mm -hmm. minutes ago. I actually think that Jacinda physically like bumps into Francis as she's like making her way through the crowded room. Not, not in the sense of like bowling him over or anything. Jacinda sees who it is and doesn't stop. She carries on like she didn't see who it was. And I just like running my hand through my hair. Just as you like, you know, you you know when you see someone you don't want to see, like mm. your eyes are like moving past oh, me. Yeah, avert. <laughs> avert, avert. I like just wink. <laughs> and you don't see any outward reaction to that. Yeah, you just, your, your gaze just slides <laughs> off and you just disappear into the crowd. Yeah. <laughs> I think I turned to the people I was talking to and be like, I don't want to say it's rather rude, but... <laughs> I want to see... Hilda getting the news, the, the, I don't know, maybe Edwin is there to give Hilda her real birthday gift. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I think what this is, is that Francis just sees Edwin and Hilda coming down the stairs together. Mm -hmm. So they seem to be talking about something very mm -hmm. important. And then like Edwin says something and Hilda smiles in satisfaction and mm -hmm. kind of like laughs as they walk down the bottom section of the stairs. Mm -hmm. I don't think Francis knew that Edwin was A, here, and B, keeping private company with yeah, Hilda. Yeah, yeah. Edwin catches sight of Francis as like I had Hilda and him have parted ways at the bottom of the stairs and gives him a nod across the room. I am confident and reckless. Mm -hmm. So I do want to have my turn with Hilda mm -hmm. um, in wishing Hilda a happy birthday. Mm -hmm. I want to be in Hilda's good graces by revealing myself to be the the brilliant uh, master, master thief that she contracted and who delivered on the job. Mm -hmm. I think it's like a double entendre to talk. Like okay. I, I'm, I'm there with a few people congratulating uh -huh. Hilda on Hilda's birthday. Yeah. I see you've kept great company with uh, uh, Colonel Edwin. You know, I worked very closely mm -hmm. with Colonel Edwin. Mm -hmm. I'd rather think he had some great news. It's a lot of parchment work. I think she's going to take this she's information. She's impressed because she thinks so little of, of you. Francis, I agree. <laughs> I think she's going to take this information and file it. Also in her brain. In her brain, for later use. <laughs> but I've heard rumors that they will have a royal ball this summer. Very pointedly look over mm. there. Invitations are going out soon. I dare say I would know since I had an, an advanced invitation. How interesting. I too have heard word. Although we shouldn't talk about it too loudly here, we'll make the others jealous. 
That's very true. That's very true. I, I really, I, my mouth is. I'm having a small soiree, a private gathering for my birthday. Later in the evening, perhaps you would care to attend. I bow deeply and I say, I would never say, I couldn't, I could not refuse. Hilda looks magnanimous. <laughs> mm. Yeah, that's, that's all I wanted for that scene. Yeah. That's cool. Thank you. Awesome. So we are going to move on to reputation. And for our reputation phase, you will find uh, your reputation criteria yeah. on your master identity sheet. Mm -hmm. And you can see there that you have both positive and negative reputation criteria for your civilian and master identity mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And unlike in uh, regular good society where you can only gain one positive or one negative tag, yeah. you can actually gain a positive tag for your master identity and a positive tag for your civilian identity or vice versa for the yep. negative if you think that you earned it. Okay. So theoretically you could get up to four uh, reputation tags in one go, In one go, one as goes, unlikely yeah. as that is to happen. <laughs> so have a read of those and as usual if there are any that you think apply. Yes, I feel like I gained a negative tag for attracting too much attention leaving a messy crime scene or dropping an unintentional clue, <laughs> all of those things. Well, that unintentional clue, definitely. Yeah. I feel like the negative tag is going to be like obvious, yeah. Yeah. Obvious is good because yeah. it can be used in a broad sense. Yeah, I think obvious is good. And to show that that tag applies to your mass identity, just put a little M after it mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so that we can keep track of which ones come from which and of course, this is what people now think about the crow as a result of the yeah. actions. For Eclipse, I think she's going to get a positive mask reputation tag for pursuing a wrongdoer when it was highly dangerous, stupid, or illegal. <laughs> uh, and I think the tag she is going to get is effective. Effective. Eclipse captures those criminals and delivers them, even if they are subsequently released. That is not her fault. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to say that Jacinda also... Uh, acted in obedience to society's conventions mm. despite considerable I hardship think so too. doing I would so. Agree. That's, is that but a positive? I'm not sure it would be a positive, but I'm not sure if there was a bit too much snark. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think the snark was just for the people in the know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I think it's like a soft one. Like, I think it is just like polite. Polite is yeah. good, yeah. I think it is just polite. As always in good society, if one of us uh, reach three positive mm -hmm. or three negative tags, that would trigger a reputation condition. Yeah. Um, and how you determine which condition to use. If all the tags that contributed to the condition are part of your mast identity, then you use a reputation condition from your mast sheet. Mm -hmm. If they were all from your civilian identity, then you choose one from your character role sheet. Yeah. And if you have both uh, mast and civilian tags contributing, just like Jacinda this does one. with yep. effective and polite, um, then it's up to you whether you would like to pick a okay. reputation condition cool. from your mast or character role sheet. So that's actually where we're going to finish up our game for today. And from here, you would go on as usual to rumor and scandal and then epistolary, um, which are pretty much the same as they are in good society, and then continue on in the cycle. So I hope this video has helped you get a bit of an understanding of the rules of sense, sensibility and swordsmanship and see a bit of how it plays out during the game. So go forth, um, set up your game, enjoy the swashbuckling, daring deeds. Seal your own girl and seal. Yes. Fake some announcements. Smooch on a rooftop, I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, and we'll see you for our next video. See Bye. you.